In this video, we're going to be looking in more detail about how we can sketch quadratic equations. So here's the general form of a quadratic equation. y equals something x squared plus something x plus something. So that could be, for example, y equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. And here is an example shape of a quadratic graph. It's worth pointing out the difference between a plot of a graph and a sketch. A plot is where you have a scale on each of the axes. So this might be going up like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. This might be going up 5, 10, 15, etc. We have a scale on each of the axes and we plot exact points. So we work out the y for each value of x and that allows us to generate a bunch of points and we join them up with a line. A sketch is a bit different. For a start, a sketch is only supposed to give a rough indication of the shape. We also don't have a scale on the axes, and the only numbers we put on the axis is the x and y intercepts. So this might be, for example, 3 and 5, where the line intersects the x-axis, and this might be 7. So those are the only numbers we generally put on the axis for a sketch. Now there's three features we need to consider when drawing a sketch of a quadratic. The first is the shape. So is it a, what we call a kind of smiley face shape or is it a frowny face shape? So which of the two is it going to look like? And we've seen in previous videos that that's determined by what number is on front of the x squared term. So if it was, say, a positive number x squared, so if a was positive, we get this shape. And if a was negative, so the example is like minus x squared plus something, then you get this shape. So a is negative. The second feature we're interested in is the y-intercept. And we'll do an example in a second where we will determine the y-intercept. And we're also lastly interested in the x-intercepts of the graph. Where does the line cross the x-axis? So in this particular example, the x-intercepts are 3 and 5 and the y-intercept is 7. x-intercepts are also known as roots. So to find the roots of this quadratic equation is to find the x-intercepts. Now let's look at some examples. This first one here, we've got y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now the first thing to note is that the number in front of the x squared is implicitly 1x squared. And because it's 1 is a positive number, it's going to be a smiley face shape. So we know it's smiley face. Now let's find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept. Now when the graph intercepts the y-axis, what do you know about any point on the y-axis? Well, the x-value is 0. So if we make the x-value 0 and we substitute it into this equation, y is 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 3. Well, 0 squared is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, and then we're subtracting 3. So we're going to get y is equal to minus 3. So if we draw our graph, we can now put on the minus 3, which is somewhere down here. It's just approximate. And the next thing we need to do is find the x-intercepts. So, and very similarly, when we're on the x-axis, what can you say about the y-value of any point on the x-axis? Well, the y-value is 0, isn't it? So we make y equal to 0. And then if we put that into this equation, we substitute it in, 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now this one's a bit harder. We've actually got a quadratic equation here that we need to solve. And you should know from previous videos um, or elsewhere in class that to solve a quadratic equation, if you've got 0 on one side, you factorise this. So we need two numbers that add to give 2 and they've got to times to give, multiply to give, minus 3. What are those two numbers? Well, 3 and minus 1 works. We can factorise it using x plus 3 and x minus 1 equals 0, because we've got equal 0 there. Now, we've got the product of two things equals 0. So if x plus 3 was equal to 0, what plus 3 is 0? What's well, minus 3? So that gives us x is minus 3. And that gives us x equals 1. So we know when the y value is 0, the x value is either minus 3 or 1. So let's put that on the graph. So minus 3 on the x-axis. Let's put the x on the y-axis there. 
minus 3, or x is 1, and then we can join it together to make a quadratic graph. So let's join it together, like that. Now there's one important thing to note here. Many students were at this point, they would draw the graph going down here, and then the minimum point would be here. They, they put the minimum point on the y-intercept on the y-axis, and then come up like that. However, because a quadratic graph is symmetrical, the minimum point is going to appear halfway between these two values here. Now, a number halfway between minus 3 and 1 is minus 1. It's not 0, is it? So we know that the, for the minimum point here, the x value is going to be minus 1, not 0. So make sure the minimum point of your graph is not on the y-axis. And this sketch is now done. Now, let's do some more examples. We've got y equals x squared minus 2x. Again, first thing to know is it's smiley face shape or frowny face shape, where it's 1x squared, that's a positive number 1, so we know it's going to be smiley face shape. Let's work out the y-intercepts now. When x is 0, that gives you the y-intercept. So remember, if x is 0, that gives you the y-intercept. If y equals 0, that gives you the x-intercepts. So if x is 0, y will be 0 squared minus 2 times 0, which equal to zero. So if we draw the graph, we know when x is zero, y is zero, so that's going to go through the point zero, zero, the origin, isn't it? And then when we make y zero to find the x-intercepts, we do zero equals x squared minus 2x. Now we factorise again. But this time, because we don't have the plus a constant at the end, we can see there's a common factor here of x. So we can factorise out the x. There's only a single bracket here, not a double bracket. So x brackets. Now x times what is x squared? Well, it's x. And x times what is minus 2x? It's minus 2. And if we say that, well, one of these two things has got to be 0. If two things times gives 0, either x is 0, so x is 0, or x minus 2 is 0, what minus 2 is 0? Well, it's 2. And that gives us the x-intercepts. So either x is 0, which is already here, or x is 2. So let's put a 2 there. And then we know it's smiley face shape, so it's going to go like this. Let's do c. We've got y equals 9 minus x squared. Now this time, can you see that the number in front of the x squared is implicitly minus 1? It's 9 minus 1 x squared. That's a negative number, so we know it's going to be a frowny face shape. Let's do what we usually do. If x is equal to 0 to get the y-intercept, then we have y equals to 9 minus 0 squared, which equals to 9. So if we draw this, we know that the y-intercept is 9. And then similarly, to get the x-intercepts, we make y 0. So that gives us 0 equals 9 minus x squared. Now we can factorise this. Now you might spot this to be the difference of two squares. We have the difference, i.e. subtraction, of two squared things. 9 is a squared thing, it's a square number, and x squared is a squared thing. So do you remember that you have two brackets one with a plus in the middle, one with a minus, and then you do the square root of each of the things. So the square root of 9 is 3, so that's the first thing of each bracket, and the square root of x squared is x, so that's the second thing of each bracket. And again, what we do, we've got a product of two things equals 0, so we say each thing is 0. If 3 plus x is 0, 3 plus what gives you 0? It's minus 3, so x is minus 3. And if 3 minus x is 0, x has got to be positive 3. So we put that on our graph, we got 3 here, and we got minus 3 here, and we join it up with a nice line. Now for the next one we've got y equals 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. And again we note that 2 is a positive number, so it's going to be a smiley face shape, because the number in front of x squared is positive. And again, as before, we find the y-intercept first. So if x is 0 to find the y-intercept, y is going to be 0 minus 0 minus 3. So y will be minus 3. So let's do that here. y is minus 3 when x is 0. So let's put it down there. And again, we also find the x-intercepts, the roots. So when y is 0, that gives us 0 equals 
2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Now this one's a bit harder just because it's harder to factorise because we've got a number in front of the x squared. And you use whatever method you're comfortable. So you could split the middle term. Or, uh, in this particular case, I'm just going to guess, use intelligent guessing to get the two brackets. So, we need two things at times together to give 2x squared. Well, that's going to be 2x and x, realistically. Helpfully, 3 is a prime number, so the two numbers have to times together to give minus 3. Now, I think that's going to be minus 3 there and plus 1 there. They times together to give minus 3. And let's check if it works. We also get plus 1x minus 6x, that is indeed minus 5x, so that factorisation works. And then again, as we usually do when we solve quadratic equations, we say one of these two things is going to be 0. So if 2x plus 1 is 0, we could sort of write that out separately and solve it, but let's try and do it in our heads. If 2x plus 1 is 0, then 2x is equal to minus 1, and that means that x is equal to minus half. And this one, if x minus 3 is 0, then x has got to be equal to 3. So let's put that on our graph. We have 3 here, and we've got minus half here. And again, be careful when you plot it, that the minimum point of the graph is not here, it's just a bit further, because it's somewhere halfway between minus half and 3, because it's symmetrical. The line of symmetry is there, isn't it? And finally, let's do the last one here. We've got y is equal to 6 plus x minus x squared. And as before, we do the usual things. We say if x is 0 to get the y-intercept, then we get y is 6 plus 0 minus 0, which equals to 6. Let's put that here. 6. And again, we make y equal to 0 to find the x-intercepts. So we get 0 is equal to 6 plus x minus x squared. Now, quadratics are quite difficult to factorise if there's a negative number in front of the x squared. So what we could do, a bit of a cheat here, is that we could multiply both sides by minus 1. Now, 0 times minus 1 is still 0. So we just put 0 equals, and then let's negate everything. Well, times everything by minus 1, so we get minus 6 now it's minus x, and now it's plus x squared. And I'm just going to reorder that so that x squared is first, because when we usually write quadratic equations, the x squared term comes first. Then it's minus x minus 6 equals 0. And as before, we factorise that. So we need two numbers which add to give minus 1 and times to give minus 6. So what are those two numbers? Well, it's minus 3 and plus 2. So that means that either x is 3 or x is minus 2. And if we put that on here, we have 3 and we've got minus 2. And we can see just looking at these three points, when we draw a line between them, it's going to give us this frowny face shape. Uh, now note that's further away from 0 than minus 2 is. So the, the maximum point in this case, the top of the graph, is going to occur slightly after 0. So just make sure that when you draw it, the maximum is just slightly after 0. And our graph goes through like this. Now let's finish off with some test your understanding questions. I want you to sketch the graph of the equations y equals x squared minus 11x plus 18 and y equals minus x squared plus 4x. You may want to pause the video now to try and attempt these questions. So let's do the first one. We've got y equals x squared minus 11x plus 18. We do the usual thing. We want to find the y-intercepts first. We make x equal to 0, and that's going to give us y equals 0 minus 0 plus 18. It's 18, isn't it? So if I sketch that, we get 18 here. We also need to make y equals 0 to find the x-intercepts. So if we do that, 0 equals x squared minus 11x plus 18. We need two numbers that add to give minus 11, because we want to factorise this, and times to give positive 18. What are those numbers? Well, if the product is a positive number, they're either both positive or both negative. And because we've got a negative number here, then two numbers must be both negative, and it's minus 9 and minus 2. So if we factorise that, we've got x minus 9, x minus 2. Now, in this product, one of the things has to be 0, so either x minus 9 is 0, in which case x is 9, 
or x minus 2 is 0, in which case x is 2. So let's put that on here. So we've got 2 here, 9 here, and then just draw a nice line going between them. And finally, the second question. So we've got equal minus x squared plus 4x. Again, we just make x equal 0 to find the y-intercept. So we've got y is equal to minus 0 squared plus 0. That's just 0, isn't it? So if I draw that, that goes through the origin. When x is 0, y is 0. Now, if y is 0, we get 0 equals minus x squared plus 4x. Now, again, you could times both sides by minus 1. So 0 is equal to positive x squared minus 4x. And this is one of the ones where you've got a common term you can factorise out. So if you factorise out x, because they have a common factor of x, 0 is x brackets x minus 4. So either this thing is 0, in which case x is 0, or x minus 4 is 0, in which case x is 4. Let's put that on our graph. We've got x is 0, we've already got that, or x is 4. And we note because it's minus 1x squared, minus 1 is a negative number, so it is a frowny face shape, so we draw it like this. Well done if you got that right.